just a couple of just a couple of thoughts here. Uh, there are many. Every country has to arrive at its own plan for energy, <laughs> yeah. and I think India will have to adopt a strategy slightly different from Germany. For sure. Uh, two things come to mind. One is solar. Of course, India has tremendous advantages. Unfortunately, the government has gone for large solar farms instead of going the German way of rooftop solar as well. Yeah. With 1.2 billion people, we have the largest number of homes. We can have an advantage in rooftop solar, which the government is just about to introduce. <laughs> That's one. The second advantage, and that is the other balancing factor, which India has an advantage, a competitive advantage, is biomass. Yeah. Uh, let me give you two examples. Uh, biomass conversion into methane. Germany has lots of technologies. And till last year, uh, the conversion efficiency was about 60%. But now German technology, with an Indian company called Sovereign, in for, uh, so, uh, Sovereign Technologies, they have set up a, con a methane generation facility in Chitale at Kolhapur, yeah. where the conversion efficiency is as much as 94%. So, and India produces dung because of people, because of animals. Unlike Germany or Scandinavian countries, we don't have forest waste as much as if we have yeah. animal and human waste. That, if harnessed properly, our calculations show that 30% of the oil that we import can huh. easily be substituted. I'm just talking oil. Yeah. So if you balance solar and biomass along mm. with the other sources, yeah. you have a winning, con uh, a win winning combination uh, which where you can use biomass whenever the sun is not shining and you yeah, can use solar. Sure. So you can balance it out very carefully yeah. and still be competitive in the energy basket, yeah. your views. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think uh, I think there are a lot, a lot of cows, and they will stay here because they are holy. So <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> and no, for sure, this is this is only the the example for Germany, and Germany sticks to its uh, uh, technologies, what we have, and uh, to the energy renewable energy source. Also, we do solar. We should not, but every country in the world will find its own answer. Slightly different approach. And for sure, if you can produce biomass-powered uh, uh, electricity, yeah. it's good because it's like uh, uh, always running uh, electricity. It's even better than wind or solar power because you don't need to balance it that much. Yes. Well, the other thing which I wanted to ask you, and Germany was uh, six years ago. Germany embarked on uh, a possibility. This was before the Libyan crisis. This is before the Syrian crisis. Uh, they were talking about a project called Desertec. Yeah. Desertec was a fabulous idea. Yeah. Desertec, it's a project where if you could set up a solar plants in the Sahara Desert, just six hours of capturing the solar would power the whole world for a whole year. And they wanted to set up the solar plants, supply power to neighboring countries, use HVDC lines that Siemens was a partner to, and Munich Ray was a refinancing company, was the coordinator. Yeah. What's happened to that? I think, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that it's a kind of mistrust. I, I think they, uh, they, they put it down a little bit. I After think Libya. I, 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 uh, After Libya. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think RWE stepped out of it. At least, uh, at least one of the guys from RWE was in, ah. in the leading position there. And a couple of, uh, it was a mixture, also some uh, German power companies were in this project and I don't know why it's not that anymore supported, you know? I mean, I think it's a political issue. Political? You okay. Would, you would put the heart of, like, in Germany still an industrial nation, I mean, you would put, put the heart of this industrial nation, which made us all like a really rich, a really rich country. If you put it in a region of the world, <laughs> yeah. No, it's important because yeah. it gets recorded in us. Yes, um, you would uh, put this in a regional world which is like not really secure politically. And I mean, we have right now, we have, we have a big problem all over Europe with, yeah. all over Europe with, with this uh, <laughs> refugees. And I mean, like, um, this is a big, other uh, different 
It's on its own. Uh, different mm -hmm. contenders. Yeah. I mean, this, this, these are the main reasons why it is yeah. set up, in my opinion. I, I think, uh, but I think, uh, yes, for sure, I think it's for political reasons, since they don't trust anymore. But actually, the, the idea behind it was, I think they don't, I, I, they, they didn't want to import uh, the stuff to Europe, the electricity. The, the, the biggest chunk they wanted to leave in yeah, North, Northern Africa, and I think that's the right way. It's a completely different discussion now. But that's the right way to act. Uh, to, to energize Africa. Yeah, to energize to Africa. One, to energize Africa, and two, it will reduce the cloud of the oil producing. Yeah, and to mitigate against this re uh, refugee problem. Yes. We all, all of your yeah. Yes. So the idea, the idea was brilliant. It was a brilliant concept. Yeah. Actually, I have to catch up on it. Please keep in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why not in Rajasthan then? Look, Rajasthan is a great area because it's uninhabited. Uh, you are doing uh, as much of solar in Rajasthan. In fact, now they started a new mission which they're going to talk about in the next 15 days uh, on what Rajasthan wants to do to compete with Gujarat. No, we can see The thing is, it has an advantage. It has an advantage because it's yeah. uninhabited. Uh, Large uh, tracts of land. Otherwise, I thought land would be a problem to solar yeah. The trouble is most of solar projects that have been announced are large land areas and we suspect that one of the reasons why the prices have come down is because people are arbitraging the price of land for resale 10 years later. So they're discounting the prices today with solar to get allocation of land which they will sell later at a profit. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. It's a land grab. It's a land grab. What about new technology for solar generation? If you look at the solar, you've got the cell on one hand, you've got the electronics on the other hand, and you've got the storage on the third hand. <laughs> the real breakthrough will be when the storage prices fall one to one fourth its yeah. level, which is what is being worked on yeah. across the world. Yeah, I think this, uh, that's the main problem of the whole thing. I think all most of the research energy technologies right now is on the storage. Down on storage because if you have a, a, a energy turnaround like this, and then you have storage and you don't need to care about uh, balancing requirements, all this stuff, then the big uh, problem of the whole uh, uh, renewable energy uh, this in, is the solution. In fact, I must I must also mention one more thing which he didn't mention. Germany is brilliant in the second part, you know, the solar, the solar cell is one part, but the electronics, Germany has mastered the technology, it has brought in new techniques, methods, inventions. But because it created these so-called balancing entities, for what I call aggregators, okay? yeah. that's yeah. my word, not yeah. yours. Okay. <laughs> okay. Today, Germany employs more people in solar power than in the automobile industry. Okay. It's labor intensive, it's suited to yeah. India. It, it's a great employment generator, yeah, which India has not true. yet realized. That's true. That's true. Yeah, indeed. I think it's uh, like 400,000 people in Germany, actually also in India already, which yes. are connected to this industry. And if you can imagine, if you, you know, a big power station you build with, I don't know, 300 people within five years, or I don't know. But imagine how, how much solar uh, power installations and wind uh, power installations you need for a country like this to scale the whole story up to 100 megawatt. How many people we get employed. Find, find work in this? It's a labor intensive job. Though I believe in India, wind power will not succeed very much because whatever wind power we've succeeded, the, the graphs that you showed, is because of depreciation financial benefits yeah, okay. and not because of intrinsic yeah. Uh, benefits. Oh, but they have found some non. Uh, uh, just a just. Yes. I just want, what I want to know is from the last slide which you showed that everybody should their own do their any given day. Uh, and this is both to both of you. This kind of a restructure that you mentioned. Yeah. Restructure. Is that kind of a thinking happening at Delhi level? He was at Delhi, not me. <laughs> no, no, but still, you are also following it more closely. Is that, what is your meaning? I, I hadn't uh, been on a, uh, on a discussion, I think, one month ago, and there was a head of the transmission oper oper operation okay, yes. company, and I had the feeling they are already aware of this problem. They are already uh, uh, really 
they see that there's a lot of solar and wind energy is coming from Rajasthan and Gujarat and they have to prepare also for the other parts of it. Uh, so at least the awareness is there. But you know, uh, awareness is not uh, sufficient. You also need uh, investments. Investments. And so at least uh, they are aware of the problem. Let's say scale out the renewable energy story, they have to do something. And probably they have to enlarge the maps and they have to team up with neighboring countries, yes. which would uh, be quite a good idea. But I think uh, if you achieve uh, 100 gigawatt, probably it will be in 10 years. So I think the best bet would be on uh, storage technology. Yes. So because 10 years, you have, you have, have you seen what we achieved in 15 years? Yes. All this was done in 15 years. When the price is already very high. So 10 years with the whole research in the world going on uh, on uh, storage technology. So I think, uh, you know, most people are always keen on uh, thinking that we find a new like nuclear fusion technology or like this. But I think there's a lot of research going on on this storage problem. Yes. So I think when uh, India will come into the stage, you can bet on uh, probably the Chinese have uh, invented a good storage. So, but that, that's really an option. Huh? It, it is like pumping up, pumping up, like it's pumping up more. Please, please give the mic. We had a discussion here with Deepak Gadia, who is in, uh, uh, in here only, and I had suggested that this, uh, uh, you should pump up the energy for storage. It's a kind of system which was followed long back in Hungary. Yeah. And he said that uh, turbines are not available. Micro turbines are not available in India. So now I get a point when if uh, it is already developed system in Germany, why not we give that uh, uh, some sort of, uh, there is an opportunity for the Germany to have a participation in this. Can I, can I mention here? If you talk to Tata's, for example, they have one of the biggest hydropower projects in uh, near Pune. Yeah, in Kapoli. In Kapoli, yeah. They are doing this. All hydropower projects use pumping up water technology because at night when you don't need power, exactly, you pump the water up so the same water gets recycled. This is something which I am doing and half the power plants are with German technology because Siemens has been a great partner in that area. So I think uh, the availability of micro turbines is a, I think... Micro turbines don't push it up. Micro turbines are good enough for run of the water. Kind of no, no, for generating electricity. So in, actually in Germany, it's uh, also it's all about costs and prices. So sometimes uh, we, we see at the energy exchange, we have negative prices. And then the, uh, we exported, uh, the Austrians are taking it, and the Swiss people, we are interconnected with them. And they pump up all the water and do the uh, hydro storage. Yes. <laughs> with negative prices. They are using negative prices, they get money to take the electricity. <laughs> so, because if we have oversupply, there are too much wind and solar energy and we cannot put down the uh, big power stations, which takes some time to put down the big night power stations. Then they take the electricity and get money for it and they pump up uh, their uh, hydro and they earn double. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> One second, one second, there's a question. Just yeah, um, especially with so much of focus on wind energy in Germany, I just have a small question and also educate me if I'm wrong. Um, wind energy, you know, especially the offshore one, uh, is quite productive at the night time compared to solar, which is quite productive at the daytime, right? Yeah. But the actual peak load in any country like India or hopefully in other countries will be quite high in the daytime. Yeah. So if you have so much of wind energy coming in the night, so how are you trying to kind of use that, uh, especially with the storage systems being so weak? Are you just, that was one question which is I had on uh, wind energy. Yeah, well, we didn't start it yet so much with offshore wind energy. And I think onshore wind, and wind energy has not a cyclus like this in the day. I, I don't know. But actually I think uh, it's more prone to solar. Solar energy is uh, quite good with, uh, uh, with a maximum demand because in the daytime we have uh, solar energy. And I think wind is a little bit unpredictable. I don't know if there's a. I don't know the, if, it, if there's a regular. No, let me let me answer let me answer the question in a different way. Whenever you surplus power, in Germany they have they have flexible pricing mechanisms. In most advanced countries, you have time of day pricing. 
So the second you bring prices down at night time, you know, no. factories shifting the production from daytime to night time to take advantage of low power costs. That's, uh, that's also why we... Why we sometime like March or something, but I don't know. Yes, absolutely. That's, You're right about that. You remember the smart dirig uh, the swan dirigent? Yes. He, will, he will do it. If there's, if there's a lot of wind production in the nighttime going on, they will load the, they will start the washing machines. They will load uh, electricity, uh, the electric vehicles. You know all the, yeah, all, all the energy con because it's cheap and the energy is there. Yeah. So the prices are cheaper. So it's also good for the demand. Oh, if I would be the customer, I would prefer to wash my. Actually, we are already doing this. We have a split tariff in Germany that in some parts of uh, Germany uh, in the night uh, energy is cheaper because they want to give you an incentive that you use, for example, washing machine. Or I don't know what you can use in the night. Downloads are... Pff. Yeah, you can, you can do it cheaper. And then, uh, for sure, you have peak load tariffs. So you can also do a little bit with uh, demand management. He's got, a, He's got one more question. Okay. Yeah. Um, apart from PV uh, photovoltaic technology, uh, do you see any other technologies quite promising, like uh, thermal solar, especially if I have to con power the air conditioning systems, which, things which like that? Solar? Solar thermal. Yeah. Which ah. other technologies are quite promising, close to the stage of commercialization or like success? I don't know. I visited these plants in Spain. Spain. Uh, some years ago, and I think uh, these are, they are still in Give the. the they are still in the. Uh, they are not developing. I don't know. I mean, since okay. not to, you know? I know. That. You see, the trouble is, whenever you put solar thermal, you are heating water at the top, creating steam, and the heat is intense, and you need cooling systems. The cost involved in cooling systems takes away the advantage that you get from solar power. Yeah, so, and you have even to transport because transport, it's a centralized, centralized power station. You have to transport so it is it. the cooling system and the <laughs> transportation that becomes a disincentive, and that is why CSP has not really worked as much as thermal, uh, as much as photo photovoltaics. Sir, so, yeah. you had a question. Hello, uh, yeah. Uh, from whatever you had shown, that you know the variation in the solar and wind, and the conventional, you know that one day you were able to meet the complete requirement nearly through the solar and wind, yeah. and suddenly then you have a condition where you are have to totally depend upon the conventional power. Now, one of the problems of these thermal plants is that they cannot take up the load immediately. No. They require about three to four hours to yeah. come up to the peak load. Okay. Now, how do you manage this? Because, you know, the, as you said, the wind power is variable. You know, you may have suddenly yeah. the wind, the wind may suddenly fall. And now, how, how do you then take care of mm. this sudden variation yeah. in the requirement? <laughs> that is one part. Second is, whenever you have high loads, you know, that is you are able to manage through wind and solar, you have to keep the thermal power uh, idle. Okay. So, you know, it, it is keeping the PLF very low, plant load factor. Now, how does it work in the economics? Sorry? How does it work economically? Because you have to keep the plant nearly shut down, the thermal power. Yeah. The lignite plant will be shut down. Ah, okay, yeah. Solar, yeah. So, so how do you, okay. you know, balance the economy? Okay, for the first question, uh, we have different kinds of balancing mechanisms. Uh, in Germany, uh, usually uh, it should have been natural gas-fired power stations because yeah. you can the easier to start up. You yeah. can easy, easily start them up and very fast. Yeah. So unfortunately, that's another uh, chunk of this energy vendor paradoxon. We almost uh, <laughs> they're almost squeezed out, so we have a little bit of problem on that, but we think they will come back because uh, we put down also the uh, hard coal and lignite power stations. Then we have a lot of uh, demand side mechanisms. And then uh, in Germany, we have the, uh, we have the, we have a wholesale uh, traded price at the power exchange. And uh, this price will give the incentive uh, for the demand, for the whole demand side to use energy or not. So what I just have mentioned Sometimes you have negative prices, so you take the energy and you, you get some money. So, because then there's such a low demand that actually you have this problem, that you cannot uh, stop down the, the big lignite power station or nuclear power station like this. So actually there's a also, uh, you have a coal fire is very slow, nuclear power they try to improve, gas is very fast. So we have some mechanisms to, to balance it. 
and with the uh, economics behind this, uh, there's a big discussion going on about capacity markets. So right now, uh, because we still have to reduce until 2020 or 2022, 8 million tons of uh, carbon emissions in Germany to stick to our targets, there was a big discussion how we can achieve it. So we only can achieve it if, uh, if we face out some lignite and hard coal power stations. And we put it in cold reserve. And the other discussion on that point is uh, right now in Germany, the most uh, money you pay to get a kilowatt hour of electricity is for the energy. So there's a whole Europe, there's a big discussion on the whole the world if you can, uh, if you can alter the uh, uh, electricity market design that you give a, a capacity price. It's about capacity markets. And probably that will be the future, that you don't only uh, 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 price the energy you will get, but you also price but the capacity. Uh, the capacity. Uh, because otherwise you will have a big problem. There's no incentive anymore for a big power utility and to invest in uh, conventional power. But if you have a storage, then this problem will be solved. So, totally. Can you uh, have one more question, please? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Can we have that person? He's a new. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm trying to add few inputs. What's actually happening in the... Yeah, sure. I'm Indradeep. I uh, come from Edom Infrastructure Advisory Private Limited. Uh, I'm actually uh, trying to say in few states, we've already started the concept of net metering regulations yes. for solar rooftop, where the net export can be actually adjusted by the existing FIT of the particular state. So actually, yes. this is a very boost, boosting thing for Absolutely. certain states. Absolutely. The second thing is, uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Thomas has shown, there are some pre-structuring that is required to adjust all the generation and balancing of the wind, uh, any renewable energy power. Yes. The ministry is currently contemplating to design a dedicated renewable energy corridor, which is the green energy corridor, which is currently under design process, and maybe will be operational in another couple of years. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, uh, the wind space, as we can see, we have a net target of 60,000 megawatt or 60 gigawatt till 2022, and we are in around 22,600 megawatt of power now. But as we see, the best of the wind sites are already been used by uh, wind developers who have projects which were commissioned way back in, before 2000. So if you see the wind turbines that were installed back then, are of capacity of hardly 200 or 225 kilowatt machines. But now, around 2.5 megawatt machines are available. So now the government is contemplating to come up with repowering concept. There will be some uh, evolutionary, some very dynamic business models where the old projects will be revamped and new projects will come up with almost 2.5 times the existing capacity. And uh, thirdly, what he was asking, uh, I was actually uh, doing some research work on the balancing mechanism of Germany. Germany has a very, very dynamic three-phase pricing model of the balancing market. Primary control, secondary, and the tertiary model. So Germany has to maintain 50 plus minus 0.2 hertz uh, grid frequency at any condition. So they have this thing within 30 seconds. Whoever will balance the power, then they will be incentivized. And for that, again, they have a lot of economics, like they have, have competitive bids, whoever will supply the power and all. We are again, India is contemplating uh, a full-fledged concrete commercial settlement, deviation settlement mechanism framework in India. We have that is that now, but there is no commercial settlement as of now. But we are coming up with that in another four or five months. That's it. No, no. Last question, please. Can we, last question. Yes, uh, I'm, it's a very elementary question, it will not get quite clear. Yes, that they, there was a, uh, always a, people when they want to invest in plant, power plant in India, you calculate how many crore rupees per megawatt capacity. So I just want to be clear, would we say that now, for a certain megawatt capacity, a solar plant could be cheaper than the coal based plant for whatever, the, all the other iniquities in the system? Or is it still much higher than the coal based plant? As an investment. I think uh, if you see that a company can bid in an auction for these prices to, to set up uh, 50 megawatt in Madhya Pradesh, I think then it's already competitive. Okay. It no, can I mention here, what I think yeah. happens is the initial startup cost of solar is a little higher 
Yeah, but you because no, no there's no cost. Cost. there's no re recurring cost. Yeah, but, sure, but you have to always factor in the future against current matters. Absolutely. Yeah, but you you see it over a lifetime of uh, ten yeah, or sure. twenty years. So then, in that case, why there is not enough investment coming in on its own without giving you too much of interest? The, the all the policies are not in place. Nature, why the nature? Investment doesn't gravitate to solar companies. Uh, yeah, I think one problem is in India that the financing costs are very high. I think you have to pay like uh, 12 or 14 percent. I don't know interest. That's a big problem, but actually it is a big problem for all power stations. So it's not uh, unique to solar energy, but probably yeah. solar energy investors are smaller. You know, if, uh, if you build up a nuclear power station, then there's a state, so they probably don't care too much about high interest rates. Not for a small investor in solar energy. The nuclear cost is so high. I mean, I yeah. No, the, 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 <laughs> second, the second reason is that the policies for buyback of power have not stabilized for solar. Hmm. Yeah. Somebody has to buy back the power, guaranteed buyback. Yeah. Yeah. That but has not very, worked out because of a variety of reasons. Yeah. So in Germany, uh, they made it easy for the investors. You have a stable feed in tariff for 20 years, and you have a guarantee that someone is taking your electricity. So yeah, you can produce, you can easily calculate about yes. 20 years time. You get a fixed tariff, it's decreasing, yes, but uh, for, for you it's, as an investor it's stable. So you, you can recalculate and actually it was an incentive because yes. otherwise one, no one would have uh, invested. And we call it a big incentive for dentists because uh, we <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, richer people, they put it on their own Owned house. houses, yes. But solar power does have long, long term <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, cost because the batteries have to be changed. We don't have long lasting batteries. Okay. Yeah, anyway. but I think it's uh, nominal against uh, uh, fuel costs for power, coal fired power station gas. Or anyway, I think we have to close it now. Uh, let me first of all thank Elmer for a wonderful talk. Wonderful talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all. Right. My pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You. It was a great, was a great talk. We love the numbers that you gave. <laughs> <laughs>